Hello, my name is Stefan Schneider and I am Product Manager for Speedtech at SIG. I will show you now what diagnostics functions are available for Speedtech. For this we use a programmable Speedtech, a PGT14 programming tool and a laptop with SOPAS installed and the proper SED file installed. To access the diagnostics functions, make sure that Speedtech is connected to the machine and electrically connected to the control. Then connect the PGT14 to the config port of Speedtech. Connect the USB side of the PGT14 to the laptop. Start SOPAS and connect to Speedtech. We have started SOPAS and now we make a double click to open the Speedtech home screen. All diagnostics data of Speedtech is available on the home screen. You see device data or sensor data like the operating hours and the temperatures of the laser modules. You also see the status of input and output functions. There is also application data with values like the measured speed, retro reflection errors, lost speed values and the signal to noise ratio. On the right side you see application charge of these four values and these charts show the values of the past 30 seconds. When reading the application data the material to be measured needs to move ideally constantly or in the typical motion profile. I will now explain you the use of the most important values. Besides each value, there is a help field which explains the purpose and the limit values. For speed, the value should be between 0.2 meters per second and 10 meters per second to achieve the specified accuracy. The rate of reflection error indicates that the laser gets disturbed by reflection of its own lights. This value should be below 1%. The lost speed value indicates the share of lost speed values. One or both lasers detect no valid speed in this case. Please note that this is only valid for endless material and without start-stop operation. This value should be below 0.2%. The signal-to-noise ratio indicates the amount of useful signal reflected from the surface. This value should be above 300. Now how can this help to troubleshoot? Let's go back to the SNR. If the SNR is above 300, you can be sure that the material is detected perfectly by the sensor. If you have values below, there is a risk of higher inaccuracy. To improve the performance, please adjust the position that the sensor is directly mounted in its nominal distance or even in the real focus point. The retro reflection error, again, should be below 1%. If you want to improve this, especially on shiny material, please check if you can tilt the sensor by up to 10 degrees and if you see an improvement. The loss speed value indicator will typically come up at start-stop operations and also if the operation is at really, really low speed. This would be a typical behavior and not a sign of bad measurements. Still be aware that below a certain speeds and at start-stop, the sensor will always lose some information. The temperature warning or the temperature indication can be used to make sure that the sensor will still operate even in warm conditions. If the temperature exceeds 60 degrees, the sensor will just shut off and not give any signals out anymore. Please note that there is no permanent damage of the sensor. If you reach temperatures above 55 degrees Celsius, the yellow light will come up. Please make sure that, in this case, change the mounting position to a position where the sensor is exposed to less heat or try to cool the sensor either with an airflow or with a cooling pad. If you want to get a deeper understanding how the diagnostic screen can be used to improve the performance in applications, please watch our use cases video.